Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl Lynette. And it's your mm. boy, Stanley. Alright, we back for the Power Book. What is it, Power Book 3, Raising Cane? Uh, episode 3, Stick and Move. Stick and Move. Before we go ahead and get into it, let's go ahead and do the YouTube thing. If you are new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. Yeah. Go ahead and rate the video at the end. Thumbs up or thumbs down, don't even matter. At this point, you've already been counted anyway. Yeah. And if you come back every week, every season, every show we review, Thank you. We appreciate y'all. Listen, we family over here and it's yeah. real lighthearted over here. And we about to bust this out real quick. And we're going to get on with our Sunday. How about that? Hey, let's do it. I would say this week's episode was, was pretty good. I um, mean, and I, a and builder. I, yeah, it won't lie. I feel like this was a filler, but hey, we take it because we're still trying to uh, get, get the these story. Names and yeah. It's a lot. Yeah, because some of y'all guys been coming through because some parts we be missing, some of the names we messed up. Thing over here, we gonna do that. It's gonna be some stuff that we gonna miss, some stuff that we not gonna catch. But that's why we got y'all guys for. We are each other's eyes and ears, so that's why we have the banter down in the com in the comments, so we can talk about the show. And so yeah, so I guarantee you that some stuff that we gonna catch that you don't catch, and you gonna catch some stuff that we don't catch. But hey, we family, and that's what we do. So let's do it. So this week we come in that uh, we getting a little bit more closer to Kane and getting into the game. Mm. So we started off that one of the uh, rocks them corners got hit and we saw Scrap on the corner and the police rolled up, Scrap hauling tail, the rest of the crew got arrested. But the part that really got me, that took me way back to when I was, when we was in middle school and high school, you ain't give a crap <laughs> about what was happening to you, but you got to make sure them got those shoes is clean. So you gonna be running half a block or a block, two blocks away from the cops, and you get over and make sure them jays wipe the dirt like, off them goddamn jays. I said if you don't get safe, <laughs> but to where you need to get to? Let me tell you, and y'all know, if you from the freaking eighties, nineties, you went to school, you ain't play nobody snap stepping on your sneaks, especially if they was white and leave yeah. a print. Oh, you ain't play that. You didn't even step right, and no <laughs> shoes didn't them. had to be fresh for the first day of school. But it's it's just so funny just seeing that, you know, going back there is, you know, he could have been locked up and all he cared about was his shoes. Because they're going to take them off if he can get you flip flops if he got caught. Yeah. So we see that Rock and Symphony is getting a little bit more serious because this yeah, episode, more? this this episode, they was doing a whole lot of bucket. Lots. A lot of so we see that they would, had just finished up. And he was like, I got a dip. Cause I got to go to the library to do some stuff with this concrete stuff. <laughs> and she was like, mm, that's more And she was like, so, oh, so you're going to F me and just leave? That's how we do it now? Uh, uh, it's he was like, I got stuff to do. Yeah, so she was like, you know what? You ain't even got to go to the uh, to the library. I got an old Magnetosh back there. Oh, what's the hell? A uh, old ma Magnetosh. Mag what? Is it Magnetosh, right? Macintosh. Well, Macintosh. <laughs> what it? Y'all know, a Mac freaking computer. He, she got... With a floppy disk. Yeah, with the flop. Y'all remember that? I, matter of fact, I remember going back to the middle school when they finally added computer classes to your classes. And you ain't care about nothing else. I just wanted to get computer class so I can get on that freaking Apple computer and play them freaking games. I can say, and the game was Oregon Trail. Or, that's what I was trying to remember <laughs> Oregon the game. Trail. Yeah, Oregon Trail. Then there was another thing that they had on there too um, so you could pick your career. And you had to answer these questions. Yeah, they, I, they yeah. must have do it at y'all school. <laughs> well, I went through it. I answered all the questions. And they said I was going to be a mortician. Based upon my answers in middle school, they were saying I was going to be a mortician. I can see that, though. But I was like, ain't no way. Because back then, you know, the, you know, Barry Wider from where I'm from, I was like, oh, well, the kid... The kid ain't fitting to be in there with no dead bodies. That, that ain't me. I don't even go. I don't even like going to funerals. Putting bodies in the ground? Oh, no. No, that ain't me. No. I can see you being a mortician. You can see me being a mortician? For real? Because you're very detailed in what it is that you like to do. If you find something you like, you're so detailed at it that you would run that thing like an army. Like, there will be no hiccups with that thing. When it comes down to it, you will have that family in, out, money in, money out. Let's do this over here. <laughs> like, I mean, I, I, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. I don't see it though. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm not saying you a planner like that, but you would, you would definitely have that business sense to know what needs to be done, how, and you can disconnect emotion from business. 
I just I just stick with being an angel investor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you start I'll help you start the funeral business. I don't know how we got here, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so Symphony on the computer doing his thing and fit to get up and catches him. So he on he on the mat. Not butterball nigga, but his draws tail, like we say in the country. His draws tail. Y'all say that because don't nobody else say that. Well, wait, anyway, we'll find where his draws tail. Y'all, do y'all, wherever you from, y'all say draws tail. Yeah, no. but maybe just us. I don't know. I'm from a small town. It don't even matter. Like Mike B used to say. <laughs> matter of fact, I wish, man, Mike. I wish hey, you Mike B, bad. if you are watching this, brother, I man, I wish to God that the Lord would put it on your heart <laughs> to come back for to these. come back and do power, man, because your power reviews was dope. Or let's do live with us. Yeah, come through. bring you in. Yeah, we can definitely bring you in and talk about it. For sure, for sure, because we family over here. Mm -hmm. It might be our brother. So, you know, just like any uh, uh, son, you wake up and this dude is in your house. <laughs> like, who Not the only in your house, he in your he, room. In your room, like, who the hell is you? <laughs> and so, of course, his mama come and like, he ain't got nothing to do with you. This is my house, which is true, and da da da. And Symphony was like, if this had been me, I would have did the same thing. She I was think like, that. Pump your brakes. Yeah. It's my son. I handled my son accordingly. I was like, oh, Rock, that was a little nasty. <laughs> okay. I get what you're saying, but yeah. But he was supposed to bend his tail at school anyway. Right. So that's what you get for skipping school. You get to see what your mama be doing when you in first period. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so now uh, we got a problem. So back from the beginning of the episode when Rock's them corners got hit. So come to find out that majority of their corners got hit. I don't know if the majority of all of them, but their corners got hit. So basically they're dry right now. And Rock was like, was talking to Marvin and Lou. And she was like, what about Neek's corner? She was like, none of them was touched. So she instantly knew then, oh, the re the Neek and the fans are pretty much, we out in the opening. So they, they, found, they, found, they, they found an opportunity to hit us and that's what they did. And, but, but we've been talking about that the last few episodes. It was like, like y'all are open. so open, man. Y'all out there, like, even on the corner. I think I seen about 50 Negroes out there on the corner. I understand that you want to have a lot so you can push it. But I'm like, spread that stuff out, man. I'm yeah. like, y'all y'all look sus suspect. Yeah, that's how roaches get killed in abundance. <laughs> you spray one corner. <laughs> so, basically... From that scene, that was the episode, the name of the episode, Stick and Move, when Scrap was running because he said in the game, sometimes you got to stick and you got to move and you notice that there was no old cats on that corner because you got to be young and quick to be on that corner. So uh, when they was in that truck talking, uh, Rock, uh, I think it was Marvin, he was Marvin and Lewis said uh, that Dean, our connect, basically want to cut us off. And we only got product for maybe about, maybe, maybe about another day. <laughs> and he was like, he not going to give us nothing else until you go talk to him. So, <laughs> Rock was like, wow. So, uh, 50 was, 50, uh, well, well Rock well, went Kanan. to the, yeah, well, Kanan, yeah, I keep, because because the boy looked just like 50 Cent. I mean, I, yeah, yeah I mean, really his manner, nice. the way he moved, everything is like 50 Cent. But, uh, she went rock with to go to the bingo game. Y'all saw him to meet him and then 50 was giving his commentary was like this dude Dean He got connects in Taiwan and basically Tijuana. Tijuana. I'm sorry Tijuana He is he um the kind of guy like he is his money is long. He move in silence, but he violent so <laughs> when, when rock walked in <laughs> When he reached over there and cut that old lady's head, here it ain't off I said I'm she so was bad. like she was like I was like, bro, but you know that she ain't say nothing. I'm like, yeah, so it must it must was a standard procedure because you know you don't oh, mess with no old people. Not doing Why no there ain't no bingo game? <laughs> you wanna get your way whoop, do that. I remember back in the day, boy, if uh, my family boy would get them them rolls of bingo boards that yes, roll sir. up the rolls and them bingo dabbles. Uh, oh uh, man. And they would And they would have that roller tape, that scotch tape, and they would tape it down. And they and they get ready to go to the bingo like I got my lucky rabbit's foot tonight and I'm fitting to hit that jackpot. <laughs> and then when you play the hard boys, you had those uh yep. those chips with the metal on it and you got your little thing, you swipe and pull them up. <laughs> Trust me, my whole family are a family of gamblers. <laughs> yep. So through that exchange, basically he was like, Y'all guys, y'all too sloppy. You need to clean that skit up. But Y'all might get help with this part right here with the other guy that Rock was talking to, I guess, work with Dean and was using him to, to set up Neek. 
uh, to. But he didn't know he was setting up. But he didn't. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't know it. Yeah. So I, I don't know who that guy was, but he was the one that she she all uh, they was in the church and she paid him to basically help with the setup to take Nick's to portion. take to take Nick's portion because he has dreams to go back to the Carolinas yeah. with his wife and a few of his girlfriends. Rock was like, I got enough money for you and your wife and your family to move over there, right? But and maybe one of them girlfriends, but this is what I can do. But you gotta you gotta make sure that his supply comes here. I said, what you about to do? Right. And so we see later on in the episode that uh, Detective Howell, which is AKA Omar Epps, he got cancer. Yeah, he do. But basically, uh, he wasn't paying the doctor no mind. So basically he like, I don't got time. He, his face is brown, I ain't got time for cancer. So when he left out there, you know, he was like, you could see on his face like, dang, I'm I got cancer. Guy. But I'm so glad I came back to this part because when he got back to the, the car, when the girl was talking a whole lot of skit because the captain, you know, ripped them a new one because y'all out here in the streets, y'all bringing these, these corner boys, but we need to find out who shot uh, Buck 20 and who shot, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, uh, D-Wiz. This stuff you bring us ain't nothing. We need some real stuff in the streets. Mm -hmm. So when they got, so after they finished talking to the captain, got back in the car, she's talking skit. Like, I got what you, cause I thought you was experienced and all this stuff. And, <laughs> he and you both showing me the rope. And he basically was like, wait a minute. You basically here because you trying to follow the family business, and I know a lot of kids like that. I wanna, I wanna be a lawyer because my daddy was a lawyer. I wanna be a doctor because my mom was a doctor, and you don't really wanna do it. He said you're and, supposed to be a nurse. Yeah, you're supposed to be a nurse. So he, I mean, he ran her perfect, and she didn't say nothing because I, he was right. He was like, so basically, you don't even belong out here because mm -hmm. these streets put respect on my name. <laughs> yeah, so he pretty much like, I can't train you to have something that you need when yeah. you came here. This is a gift. This is a unique gift. Yep. And you don't have it. Yeah. And so that led into when Rock, we saw Rock brought the information back to Detective Howard that, hey, Nick is going to have a drop on such and such day. Here's your opportunity to get him. Now, I was like, oh, Rock. I was like, uh, but at first, because I had to actually want go back in the episode be transfer, I had to go back to the park when they was in the truck to see how that kind of spiral because yeah, I had like, I had missed me because I was like you setting up me it's like what but he called all people on for y'all but when she was in the truck she you no know, like I said when he was in the truck she was like he, he had yeah he basically set her up so at least that's what it looks like that's what it appears to be I mean I mean look that but way are you and your your son very good at assuming <laughs> so we see where that got him right so when they was um preparing to set Nick up when they was talking well. Well, preparing to go and get Nick's crew when they make the drop, uh, the detective was talking to her. Was like, "What you think about this?" And she was like, "I believe what, what Detective Howard would say." I was like, "That's a change. That's a change uh -huh. right she there." She said, "If he said that this he is a good, good thing, thing to do, I'm with him. I'll be there with him." So we we got we got to the stakeout and it, it stupid. I I don't like. I don't cops. know if I was more <laughs> pissed off at the cops or them because. Nowhere in there you looked and saw anything suspicious going on. Yeah. Vans. These clearly unmarked cop cars. Like, buildings. Like... Even after you circle the block four times. Lucia's line would have been seen <laughs> yeah. that skit. Ghost would have seen that skit coming. Time Man would have seen that coming. So, uh, they didn't show us, but we just gonna believe that they got the guys because we saw later on in the episode where uh Lulu and Marvin was sitting in the trucks and was like, Bet Nice Corners is dry. I think we good now. But yeah, Neek was, like, was <laughs> but Neek had rolled up and was like, what the? What the hell going on with oh, my car? was like, you know. And then he saw them in the truck like these Negro. Yeah. So the war is on. Yeah, so the war is definitely I I definitely didn't see Neek and Rock Cross because it seemed like they were they had a I, mutual I, respect yeah, for the I, business. Yeah, but she believes that he uh, crossed her. You know, she ain't asked no questions. But I, I would have thought maybe she might have would have asked some questions. Yeah, but she been asking them yeah, questions. Yeah, they've been talking about everything. So I, I, I don't know. Yeah, but um, this dude Crown. I don't know who he is, but obviously he <laughs> must was a producer and did music back I in told the day. You who it was. DJ Cassidy. <laughs> That's Cassidy. All right. 
So if y'all got some some history on him, go ahead and put that in the comments because one thing over here, we don't we don't go back and do no search and nothing like that. We just watch the show no. and, and give you what they give us. Yeah. Uh, I'm not in school. I'm not doing all this research. Right. So if you know if you know who Crown is, but uh he was waiting on ice cream, man, which was Lulu and the girl Natalie. But you can already tell that when when she came in, you could tell they had some type of connection. Like he wanted her, and it kind of looked like he, she might have wanted him a little, a little She's bit. She's an opportunist. So she was like, you know, my brother. My brother. He a rapper. He dope. You need to see him. So he was like, huh, bring him through. So when they got back outside, Lulu was like walking, like, you know what? What's that? What's that? Because he viewed it as this dude is trying to roll up on my girl. Through her, through through her, just telling him that her, that his that her brother can what you call it, which means that her, if her brother come back to the studio, she, she coming too. too. I mean, so I don't know where 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 that's gonna go, but uh, jukebox boy, jukebox is loving this white girl. This white girl, they was at the, what it was at the mall. I think it was the mall. Yeah, I I remember doing that. I remember doing that at King's Dominion. Oh, you did that? Mm -hmm. I want to even remember that. Made music video. I want to even remember that. We used to go get the um. The um, airbrush shirts, right? Mm -hmm. But one thing I can say that I do like about the the, the white girl, uh, what I, I need to remember her name. So I, is it Nicole? Is it Nicole? Somebody but anyway, y'all know who she is. That she don't allow jukebox to to stay comfortable. Mm. She always challenges, like, okay, you want to be a singer? Let's sing. Yeah. So that's the kind of friends that I, I like, like in my life. Is like, okay, if I come and tell you that. I want to start a business. Okay, when we doing this? You going to stay on me until I start my business and you're not going to take my excuses. So every time it's come time for her to sing, she don't ever want to sing. Mm -hmm. So she was like, you know what? I already paid for it. So we're going to sing. But come to find out, she can sing too. That's okay. That's like, okay. Okay. I see you now. So Kanan decide, I'm impatient. I ain't got, I don't want to do mama's timing. I want to get in the game now, so he go talk to Uncle Malden. I say it's always that one uncle. Yep, and I think if you black, you, got you that always got uncle. that one uncle that lets you hit the joint, or that <laughs> one uncle that gave you your first drink, yep. and tells you you bet not tell your mama. Tell your mama. <laughs> because both of us, both is gonna, go to, we both going to be dead. <laughs> Matter of fact, look, look, while we're right there, you know, I can remember when we was growing up, uh, my family would have cookouts every single weekend. They, I mean, they mm -hmm. buy crabs, burgers, dogs. I mean, you name it, they had it. Drinks. I mean, they party every single weekend. So us as kids, we're like, okay, so they start drinking this stuff. We, we didn't really know what it was. They drinking this stuff, and they start acting crazy and laughing and joking. We was like, you know what? We're we going to start stealing some of this. Man, we used to steal so much beer and liquor. And... <laughs> Yeah, I have stories. Yes, and then you end up in the house sick yourself. When it's time to go to bed. Yeah. Yep. That's when it hit your tail. You got to get out of bed. You, you six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, you in the bed spinning one of the while. They told us, put your foot on the floor. Put your foot on the floor. That god dog girl is drunk. <laughs> yeah, so you can relate to that, man. Let us know when, you, when your family had parties when you was younger that you used to steal liquor in the bed. Mm -hmm. I know we did. Because they were too drunk to care. They didn't even realize what was happening. Right. So, Uncle Marvin was like, no. He First, he was like, nah, Rock we, we nah. Me. Rock ain't gonna kill me. So, Kanan was like, tell you what. <laughs> if you help me out, I'll help you out. So, I'll tell Mama that she need to step you up so you can be more responsible if you give me something so I can get started in the game. It worked. <laughs> and Stella was like, how did that even happen? Like, who is he to influence his Mama to get the uncle and some more pull. I said that mama, mama and, and them brother, them, them mama and son relationships be like that. Yep. I don't understand it for the life of me. So, so uh, Uncle Marvin gave him enough to sell to make him about a hundred dollars. So we started seeing him, Juke, and there was at the park. So Juke had the clothes that they stole. Yeah. But they almost got caught. Cause I was like, why is y'all going through them boxes? Grab some it's boxes and run. Whole box. But hey. You, they, I guess they know the products they sell. They got to get the products they yeah, sell. Yeah, they got to be selective. Yeah, they got to be selective. But so they was in a park. And so he was talking to Juke. And he was like, you know, what should I, you know, trying to figure out what he going to sell it for. He was like, I'm going to sell it for $25. Was like, she was like, no, 
No, because at first she was like pouring out that she was like talking about the rappers and she was like the white people over here, the homeless people over there. But it's the white people that she wants to sell a coat to because they will pay top dollar for the coat. And which we know that from, from the previous power, on power with, with Tariq at the college. You know, with the tutor nap, mm -hmm. selling all that coat. Hell yeah. So she he was he was like, no, nah, sell that job for $50 He's each. Like, I'm not trying to get rich. I'm not this. trying to get rich. So she, <laughs> she was like, whatever. Just gonna do, do you. Just gonna do you, but just don't f it up. <laughs> so he out there. But she was like, uh, you know, you out there just kind of talk and just say stuff, but don't make it like you selling something. Yeah, like when yeah. you were in the Bahamas and they walk past you. I got that. I got that fire. I got, I got that fire. fire. Yeah, uh -huh. got that. Got that squirrel. I got that. This. And yeah. You be like, <laughs> I, I don't need none of that. I don't need none of that, player. <laughs> uh, so he got there. He he doing his thing, trying to everybody ignore him. And then one dude came up. And he was like, "How much, man?" And I think he said 35? 30? I think he said 30. And he was like, 30? It's like, man, that's, that's a good cheap. price. That's a really good price. He was like, you know what? Go and give me two for 50. And I was <laughs> like, so you you could have got 50 for one. Yeah. But you but, know, listen to you. But he said, um, when 50 came in the commentary, did the commentary, he said exactly one of my beliefs is that whenever you go out to set to do something, when you make that first sale. It's just something that be like, you know what? This is possible. So if I got one sale, I can get two. I can get three. So, yeah. And when he got that $50, he said, I said, you about to get caught right there. Yep. <laughs> about to get caught. But I, we had no idea why he was so adamant about getting in. Then we found out. Because we remember later in the ep episode when it was at, that, at the, uh, the spot, you know, that Ross sent them to to protect him. Uh, she saw Danita coming through, um, pushing the baby with the daddy twos in there that she was going to sell to make some money so they can get something to eat. I so, said, dang. yeah, so that was the catalyst right there for him to go to do it because we saw later in the episode where he brought her groceries. So he was, he was out there. He won't hustle to put money in his pocket. Just, you know, well, that just for that, he was doing that too, but he was. You know, he wanted to find a lady that he's trying to get with some yeah, groceries. Yeah, so Zora the Weed Explorer got him, man. Yeah, man. And um, she she had asked him the question about about D Wiz, about if she know if if he know who who did it. And he he kind of he flipped it. He flipped so it around. I heard rumors. I heard rumors. You know. I don't really believe it though. So, yeah, but I was like, don't admit to this. Don't don't don't, don't admit. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> Cause I thought he was gonna be like, you know, I love this girl and I don't want to lie to her, so. I'm I'm just gonna tell her the truth, but yeah, yeah. I mean, but technically, he still really don't know at this point mm -hmm. that it was his that was his mama. So that that kind of fast forward us to the end of the episode when Kanan and his mama went to D. Wiz's mama house. I said, I know you. And not. she was in there praying. I know you not quoting Psalms twenty three, and then you saw Kanan started crying. And I was like, Yep, he already he, know. He know. He know that his mama. And then when she looked over at him like. Uh -huh. He was a sacrifice for you. Yeah. I was like, oh, man. Because, <laughs> I mean, we uh, we could see it was either him or Kanan. It really was. And you know, you know. The streets my, needed a body. The streets needed a body. And mamas is not going to throw their sons out there to the woods. I said, matter of fact, their mama will throw their own stuff out to the woods before they throw the boy out there to the woods. They'll throw the daughter out before they <laughs> yeah. throw their son out. I'm trying to tell you what I know. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean that was basically the episode. So that's you know we see Fifty is like he said he got his first sale. So guess what? He officially in the game. So we gonna keep on following this thing and see where it take us at, man. Straight from the VA. And y'all get down in the comments and let us know what you think about the episode. Like I said, fill us in on anything that we missed. Yeah. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south. Two up, two down. Holla, boom.